Let's get started very slow in our easy seat, possibly seated on something, getting our hips just a hair higher, no worries if not, but just checking in with the low back and making sure you're not pressing in as you find lifting your chest. All right, so settling onto the mat, settling into this easy seated posture, allowing the tops of the shoulders to soften. I just threw a lot at you about props, so trying to quiet the mind. And relax the body. We'll do both at once. Sometimes if we're hyper-focused, say, on something that's a little sore or achy, we're not really present, we're thinking about that knee or the low back. So go into those places, send a little breath there, say, soften up. If it's a nagging thought or feeling, Imagine it being carried out on the exhale. And we're lengthening out inhales and exhales. Really focusing on breathing deeper into the body. Letting go physically, mentally, emotionally on the exhale. And using this space for maybe a breath exercise. Like connecting a word or a phrase to your breath. Inhaling in peace and love, exhaling out, whatever you need to get rid of. Counting breaths. Or just tuning in to an intention that would serve you best. started. I want to get started with a little bit of a breathing exercise. I've been throwing some of those at you. We did it in my Zoom class on Friday and I really love it. Interlace your fingers and bring them under your head. And as we inhale, we're going to lift our elbows and our chin up. And then as we exhale, we're going to lower sort of like what you use on a fireplace. Inhale, expands, lifts up the chin. Exhale, lower. If you've taken a Bikram style class, you may have done this breathing exercise. It's a great way to open up the throat, the back, and the neck, and just connect breath to movement. It's also kind of nice, kind of help clear out our sinuses. Breathing exercises are great for that, and we are in allergy season. So let's take just one more round. Inhale, elbows up, look up. Exhale, come on down. Let's work out the rest of the neck. So drop the hands, maybe take them to the knees. Nothing fancy. We're just dropping ear to shoulder. You know I love to start with half rolls. So we're kind of compressing the back of our neck just now. This is going to open it up. And then if you wanted to add some full circles and you don't mind that compression in the back of the neck, take in a couple full circles. And 
and then switch up the direction. Unless, of course, you're taking half. Then you're just sticking with half circles. circle out. We'll inhale the head up tall. We'll come to hands, knees for the table. Spread through the hands. Get rid of any blanket you might have had underneath you. We'll come back to that later. Spread, spread. Find the thumb index and the, uh, the pads of your fingers. Hips, of course, stacked over knees. And we'll start inhaling up through our pad or our house and exhaling arcs into our path. Connecting breath to movement. So as we inhale, look up and lift up our seat. We're compressing our spine. And then we exhale, we put lots of space into it. A really mindful practice, these two flows. That's why I almost always put them at the beginning of my class. But of course, if you need some other movements, a little side to side action, some circles, now's the time. Warming up, prepping for our practice. I am going to sit with my cats and cows because I love this little moving meditation. One more big inhale, look up. Exhale your biggest arc. And then inhale to neutral table, fingers spread. We're going to start on the right side. Inhale, sweep right hand up, give the wrist a couple rolls. And send your fingers as far as they'll go. Coming on to right shoulder and right temple. You could walk your left hand to the front of the mat, or you could take it on your low back. You should be finding a lot of space behind your right shoulder blade. Your right temple's relaxed to the mat. Your left hand could always just be under your left shoulder for the sake of stability. Now, if you want to hang out in the shoulder opener, that's just fine. But if you wanted to play with a little balance, you could float your left leg and try and line your toes with your hip. Feel your core engage. Broken table. Broken table sometimes fall. At least if you roll out of this pose, it's in the privacy of your own home. Do you want to add one more? You could bend your knee. Catch the top of your foot with your left hand, a little kick, a little glass stretch. Maybe it's too beginning of class for that. Release that quad stretch, extend your toes, a little bit of core. Tuck your left knee in. Bring your left hand under your shoulder. Press it into the mat. Inhale, sweep your right hand up. And send your right hand down. All right, same deal on the left. Inhale, sweep your hand up. Couple rolls of the wrist. And then send your left fingers as far as they'll go. Coming on to left shoulder, left temple. Right hand. You can stay right underneath you. A little kickstand. You can come to the top of the mat or to the low back. Inhaling deep into the shoulder. Exhale, intention. Everything that comes after this is completely optional. You want to float right foot, see if you can't line up toes with hip. A little bit of core, a little bit of back work. Maybe a little shake or a wobble as you find balance. Do you want to play with bending your foot? Kicking into your hand, really testing your balance. If you're extra wobbly today, what's getting in the way of your practice? Extend your foot back out long. Tuck your knee in. Hold the shoulder opener for just a beat. 
and then place your right hand down. Inhale, sweep your left up. Big reach, stack rest on top of shoulder. Plant the hand. Let's take a round of cat and cow for good measure. Find some release in the back. And head to neutral. Spread the fingers. Give the toes a curl. Lift the seat. Find the downward facing. Press the heels towards the mat. Lift up the seat high. A little press of the chest towards the legs will sort of open up everything we contracted when we opened up the backs of our shoulders and our threaded needle. All right, a little balance challenge, but a lovely twist for the back. Take the right hand. Bend the outside of the left leg. Now, if this is affecting your balance already, you might want to walk in, shorten up your down dog. It's okay. Or take your hand up a little higher on your leg. Take a little peek under your left armpit. Now we're opening up our back with a twist. Take the right hand down. Really spread through the thumb index and the pads of your fingers to keep wrists safe. Left comes to the outside of your right leg. A little peek out underneath your armpit for the twist. Keep a little softness in your knee. How does this feel? Take your left hand to the mat, spread through your fingers, downward facing, and walk that down dog to the back of your mat. Hands to toes, knees very soft, head is going to hang. Grab the elbows if you'd like, or you can let the arms hang. Find a little sway in your torso and release your low back. And I'm going to really sway, taking my arms to the outside of each leg. Putting lots of space in my low back, keeping my knees nice and soft. Try and release the neck, shake out the head. Release the hands, take the hands to the mat. Put a lot of bend in your knees if that's what you need to get your hands to the mat. And walk forward through a high plank, or to a high plank I should say. Soften into the elbow, spread the hand, lower to the belly, elbows graze the ribs, toes uncurl. We're going to stick around for a couple um, cobras here. So the first one, inhale, come up, no help from the hand. Exhale, lower. Next, inhale, maybe about 25% in the arms. Come up a little bit higher, keep your elbows in. Practice releasing shoulders away from the ears and lower as you exhale. Third and final cobra. Inhale, come up a little higher. Elbows in, a little lift of chin. How does it feel? Stretch in the front of the core. Exhale, lower. Palms under shoulders. Inhale, up through a table. Assign child's pose for just a beat. Forehead down, fingers reaching. All the space in the spine and the low back. Take a moment to focus on your breathing. Inhale, pull up through a table. Give the toes a curl. Lift your seat back to downward facing. And take a big step to the front of your mat or a little walk in. This time we'll inhale a half lift, get a nice reach going in our spine. We'll dive down, forward, fold, and we'll slow roll to stand. Head will be the last thing to come up. Shrug your shoulders forward and also shrug them back. I love a little shoulder shrug. All right, lift into the chest. Let's 
take it through some more sun salutation A's. So inhale, sweep. Exhale, big hinge. Inhale, halfway lift. High plank. And we exhale as we lower. This time I'm just going to come to Chaturanga, but if you want to come all the way down, by all means. Inhale up, cobra or up top. Curl toes, lift seat, downward facing. Pedal. Inhale, fill. Back tip to the top. Inhale, half lift. Take a dive. Inhale, all the way up. Catch your right wrist at the top. Exhale, to the left. Just a little moon crescent opener. Inhale, center. Grab left. Exhale, right. Waking up the side body. Inhale, center. Exhale, hinge. Half lift. High plank. Back you go. Exhale, lowers you all or half. Elbows stay in. It's all about the triceps. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Meet in downward facing. Take a couple pedals. Extend your right toes. Get a nice reach going. And bring the right foot between your hands. Open up left, 45. Toes are angling to the top left corner. Inhale, brings hands up, warrior one. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. Being very mindful of the hips here. If you want to kind of put a little square in them, being mindful of the low back and the back knee. It used to be a common call to hear square your hips towards the front of your mat. Well, now we're a little bit more mindful that that doesn't work for every set of knees and backs. So you're just sort of playing here. What feels good for you? Where do you find opening? Now my favorite. Fingers come to the low back. They interlace. Knuckles go towards the mat. Shoulder blades draw together. We're inhaling, lifting up our heart. One more fill up, lift up. And then we'll exhale, bow into our humble warrior inside of our right leg. Drop your hands, frame your foot, shift back, taking all but a hint of softness out of your right knee. We're going to find our pyramid pose, lots of length in your spine. I'm making space by coming up high on my fingertips. You can always go to your ankle. I see people do this in class if you don't have blocks or books nearby. Or you can add just a touch more bend in your knee to accommodate. Listen to your body. Find opening in the back of your leg. Put a little length in your spine. If you wanted to try and hinge your heart over your knee, go deeper, you could. Like your forehead's coming to your shin, but don't force the pose. Inhale, come back up. Sink into your knee. Find your strong warrior one. Pick up your back left heel, spin your toes to the front. We're going to step off and into warrior three, nice and slow. Keep your right knee soft, connected in the heel and ball of your right foot. Lots of length in your spine. Pull your belly button in, engage your core, capital T with the body. This is why we stretched out our leg. Take a dive, bring your fingertips to the floor, standing split. If you need to lower your left leg, you're still going to get the benefits of this deep stretch. Maintain softness in your right knee. Step your left foot back, land in a low lunge. Frame the foot with your hand. Step back to high plank. Elbows are soft, lower slow. Inhale, back bend. And meet in down dog.
little active rest here. Bring focus to the breath. Note the differences between the legs. Inhale, sweep left foot up. Get that nice big reach. Take left foot between hands. Open right 45 degrees. Toes angling to top right corner. Up into warrior one. So pressing through pinky edge of back foot, hands overhead. Heels could line up, or they could be, feet could be on completely separate tracks, depending on what makes you feel the most stable. A step. And maybe you're playing with just bringing right forward, left hip back a hair until you find what works best for your body. Remember, we're softening the tops of our shoulders, and we're focusing on breath. Hands to the low back, fingers interlace, knuckles towards the mat, shoulder blades together, open heart, open chest. Big inhale. One more inhale. This time the exhale takes hands overhead, your humble warrior bow inside of your left leg. I noticed I was gripping in my left toes. Be mindful of that too, yogi. Release the hands, frame the foot, shift back. We're straightening, but we're not locking the knee. We don't want to force anything open. If you need a little extra hint of softness to accommodate, by all means. Maybe even place your hands on your ankle so you can find more length in your back. Keep focusing on breath. Inhale, soften the back of the left leg. Exhales, clear the mind. As you start to open up, you're going to try and take your heart over your knee, maintaining still length in your spine. Listen to your body. And then inhale, come up. Sink into your left knee, warrior one. We want a strong, grounded base. Right leg picks up, right toes turn to the front. We're going to step off. And you can keep your foot a little closer to the mat if you'd like. I like to take my hands to my heart at warrior three. Hands overhead is just too unstable for me, but you listen to your body. I'm actually going to reset. So mindful that the left knee isn't locked that you're using the heel and ball of your left foot, strengthening your ankle and your calf, your back as you find length in your spine. Dive down, standing splits. So you know you can always drop your right toes to accommodate your body. Keep your left knee soft, and your focus on your breath. Right toes go back, left foot goes back. Let's skip the flow, find down dog. Goodness knows we've earned a little rest here. Big inhales, complete exhales. Take your forearms to the mat and find a dolphin. We've been playing with opening up our legs. Is there space in the calves to pedal your heels? How does this dolphin feel in your shoulders? Your core might naturally engage, belly button pulling in. Take your left toes, just bring them up to the ceiling. A little bit of core work here. 
and you're about a half of the way to a forearm stand, but we're not going there today. Left toes down, right toes up. Just a little core strengthener to one day play with arm balances, but not today. Let's take left back up, left down, take right back up, right down, take a little walk back, to forearm plank, lower your hips, uncurl your toes. We'll take a rest here in Sphinx. Make sure your elbows are stacked into your shoulders. Neck is neutral. Look sort of towards the front of your mat. Keep your belly button pulled into your spine. That'll keep your low back safe. Just take a few moments to breathe. come towards the corners of their mat or at least to the side. Inhale up to a seal. Shoulders relax. And one more. Palms under shoulders. Inhale up through a table. Usually I'd have you take a child's here. We're going to skip it. We're going to stay and we're going to exhale arc up into a cat. Reversing the order. Inhale, cow. Exhale, and arc. Opening up the spine. One more. And then the inhale will bring us to neutral. Pop onto your knees. Knee stand. Let's go back into the side body. Right toes come out long. And I always say your toes can face forward to the side, anywhere in between. We're going to inhale up, and we're going to find our gate pose, right hand down the right leg, left hand reaching overhead. Inhale, a little lift into your heart, open up from the side body. Inhale, come up. Now we're going to work everything we just stretched. Left hand down, right hand overhead. You could stay like this. You could float your leg on a modified side plank. Or you could send your left leg out long and take a full side plank. So I have one foot in front of the other. I'm going to bring my right hand up. I could take one foot on top of the other. Today might be the day you find a little tree leg, or maybe float. Little shake, never hurt anyone. Drop your left knee if it's not already there, and let's all inhale up, and exhale back to our gate pose. Ooh, we've earned it. Inhale, fill, and exhale to open up the side body. Inhale, come up. Tuck your right knee in. Take your hands to the low back. Put the fingers in your invisible pocket. Engage your quads. Get your hips stacked up over your knees. Draw your elbows, your shoulder blades together. Inhale, lift into your heart. Throw it open to the ceiling. And a little modified camel, a little half camel. All the same great benefits. Stimulating our thyroid, making space in our heart, opening up the fronts of our shoulders. Inhale your eyes up, look ahead. Drop your arm. I want you to sit back. If you can, find a hero's pose. Seat on heel. If it's not accessible for your body, and it might not be, you can always find rest here in your tabletop. I like heroes because I find it's very spine neutralizing. Well, the same thing at a table. Just a long release line. 
by taking a moment to just soften the face. To inhale deeply. To exhale, clear out mind and body. Whether you're in heroes or tabletop, I want you to wind up in tabletop. So heroes, we'll meet the tables there. Elbows are soft, fingers are spread. So really mindful cats and cows. It's a great way to gauge the back, how it's responding to this bending and side, the side bending and back bending. Plus that connection of breath to movement. You can't think about anything else when you're letting the breath take over the body. All right. Exhale, neutral. Head back to your knees. On to the knees. Left leg comes out. What are you going to do with the toes? What feels best in your ankle? Lengthen your spine. Inhale, bring hands up. Left hand comes down, left leg. First, our gate, our side body opener. A little lift of the heart. We really want to open up from the side and not fold into this. Reaching fingers overhead. Inhale, come up. Right hand comes down. Make sure to spread through the fingers to press into thumb and index. We start by just reaching left. All right. How far do you want to take this side plank? This could be just far enough. Or the floated leg, you're still going to build up your obliques, your side body. If you wanted to send right leg out long, one foot in front of the other. Or left foot stacked on right. Maybe your tree. Just making sure not to let the hips sag too much. Making a strong base with your hand. A little shake in your arms might be a good thing. Mine certainly are. And then we're going to start dropping right knee under. We're taking left leg down. We'll inhale back up. And we'll start to come back to our gate. One of my favorite poses. Such a good stretch for the side body. And I talk a lot about how important opening up the side body is for people with stiff lower backs. Ready to inhale, come up. Hands overhead. Tuck the knee in. Okay. Camel options here, and I'm going to give you a bunch of options. What is not negotiable is we want hips over knees, quads engaged. That low body kind of stationary so we can bend from the back. Hands could come back to the back pockets. You could play with drawing elbow shoulder blades together, lifting up throat. It's a great pose. Give you energy for the rest of your Sunday. If you wanted to try half, you could give your right toes a curl under. That's going to bring you up about three inches higher. Take right hand to the right heel. And you could play here. Here's my accessible half option. Don't forget, low body still engaged in step. Or if that hurts your knee, your right foot could be on the mat, but you're going to go lower. Right hand, right heel still. Left hand forward. Low body engaged, throat open. Camel of your choosing. Bend coming from the back. Inhale your head up. Come up. Where are you going to neutralize? 
And you're going to have a seat on your heels for a heroes. You're going to open up your heels, place your seat between. That's pretty intense. And if neither of these are accessible for your ankles and your shins, would you prefer a tabletop? No matter what variation you choose, letting your spine neutralize, your back neutralize. Inhale deeply. Maybe even audible sigh out as you exhale, a really big release. Okay. We are going to go to a third and final camel. But before we do that, why don't we find our way to a child's pose? I want you to ease in wherever you're coming from. Those deep back bends are intense, and we never want to shock the muscles in our back. We want to ease into these things. So do you need to bring knees apart for your child? Or head down, do you want knees to gather bigger back rounding? Inhale out of your child into your table. We're going to do a little check-in with just a couple rounds of cat and cow, just a little bit of loosening. One more inhale, fill up. Exhale, neutral. Okay. To the knees, final time. We're going to skip the gate poses. We've already taken those and fired up our side bodies right to the camels. You know that this variation always an option, and it's a really wonderful option. It's a great way to find really good form. Now, if you took half before, we're going to head to the left side. Toes curled under. You don't go down as far. Foot on the mat, a little bit more intense. Left hand comes to left heel. I'm going to give my toes a curl under. I don't want to go down quite as far. Hips stacked over knees. A little engagement in the fronts of the legs. Right hand out. This time maybe reach it back. See the arc in the back? Not giving it by bringing my legs back. Legs are stacked. Now, full is in your practice, and I'm actually going to give my other toes a curl under. I'm not going to come down into the full, about three inches higher. Full is an option. Half on the left is an option. Half with your hands in your back pockets is an option. Open the throat. Open the heart. Embrace the vulnerability of this pose. Let in all the good things, love and compassion. Inhale, eyeballs up, take a peek ahead. Ooh, how does that feel in the back? Find your neutral, whether it's heroes or table. Lengthen spine. Exhale away any feelings that pose may have stirred up. Don't be afraid to sigh out. Once you feel like your back is properly neutralized, I want you to start to fold forward into a final child's pose. Remember, we're easing in. We don't want to stress or shock our back. But we do want to let those muscles that we just compressed release open. 
Forehead down, a great pose if you're feeling sinus pressure. Focus on breath. Inhale up to a table, spread through your fingers. We're taking just two sets of cat and cow to make sure our back is nice and released. Oh, I don't know about you, but I definitely notice it on the cow. All that arcing, and back to the arcing. So I'm going to exhale an even bigger cat. Inhale to neutral, onto the seat. I do a lot of seated forward folds. I love them for the back of the legs. If you were able to grab that blanket at the beginning of class, maybe you want to bring it underneath your seat. Lift up the hips and kind of help you tilt forward because that's what we're going to do. Inhale, lift. Exhale, a nice big hinge. Space in the back is going to be the most important thing, followed by softness in knee. Inhale, fill. Exhale, your nice big hinge. your blanket. We're going to use it for something else if you have it. And if you don't, I'm going to show you how to modify without it, so no worries. Take your right ankle, pop it on your left knee, just like you would in a reclined pigeon. Then I want you to take your left knee, see if you can't give it a bend, and put your left ankle under your right knee. I think we're trying to stack our shin bones, our ankles, and our knees, making this sort of square shape. I know in bar classes they'll sometimes call it square pose as opposed to double pigeon. The reason I said grab a blanket is sometimes we get a little gap. If our right hip is a little tight, we'll get this gap here. No worries. We'll just fill the gap, almost like you'd fill the space between bricks in a building. That little extra cushion can help you ease the hips. Now, if you try this and you're like, this is not a pose for my knees or my hips, that's okay. You can take your hands behind, and you could bend, and you could modify this way. Or even come to your back and take a fully reclined pigeon. Now, if you're in a double pigeon, if you have that like, little bit of support, I want you to inhale, lift, and maybe just place your hands on the mat in front of you. Extra mindful if you have a gap, because we don't want to strain our hip, but we do want to start dancing around the edge of our stretch. Finding the place where we really feel big opening in right hip, but no pain or discomfort. We'll inhale a little length. Exhale, fill. little extra hinge. Listening to your body and, of course, focusing on your breath. Now let's say you don't have a gap. Things are lined up and comfortable and you're actually searching for a bigger stretch. Maybe take a little walk to the left. It's always going to be your top foot. 
or away from the hip that you're stretching. It can be pretty intense. How does it feel? Imagining every inhale goes right into the hip. Sometimes we talk about the chakras. Your hips are the sacral chakra. Kind of this warm orange glow. You're feeling a little less creative these days, which given the circumstances, you might. Some hip openers could kind of help you reconnect work out the emotions that have been stored up in your hips. So if you're off to the left, bring it center, and we'll start to walk up. So left leg's going to come out, and then right. And we're going to bend our knees, plant our feet, and then she'll wipe her. So if you're on your back, if you chose to take this pose there, you're still doing the same thing, you're going to wipe her. Our big reset. Extend right long and left ankle finds its way to the top of right knee. And then right knee bends and we try and see if we can't stack our left knee on our right ankle, our left ankle on our right knee and our shin bones as together as they can be. Filling up any gaps. No worries if you have them. If you don't quite have the stuffing and you want to take it like this or recline completely on your back, by all means. First, we're just breathing into our hips. Clearing out any fears or concerns we might have about this pose. Of course, coming out if we feel pain. And then you want to start to hinge forward. Being really mindful. This might be where you stop. If this is what brings you to your edge, go no further. If you're still looking for your edge, a walk to the right. I'll stop talking here. Spend time clearing out your hips, focusing on your breath. Off to the right, center, you go. Centers walk up, nice and slow. Right legs come out first and then left. Whether you're seated or on your back, you're finding the releasing windshield wipers. And then keeping knees bent, we'll head to the back. So if you took those poses reclined, you're right where you need to be. Low back relaxes to the mat, so let's plant. Let's take soles together once the back's neutral. Find a little inside hip opener. Little reclined butterfly, right hand on the heart, or right hand on the belly, left hand on the heart. We can't get enough breath work lately. When the world seems overwhelming, the breath is always there to steady you, as long as you steady the breath.
your hands, bring them to wherever you can on the legs, and guide legs together. Bring knees into chest. Take time with the exhale, drawing knees in, big stretch for the low back. Extend your left leg long, keep your right knee tucked in. I always like to give it a little drop towards my right armpit. Give your toes a little float to the ceiling then. Keep your leg nice and centered, your right knee soft. Find opening in the back of your right leg, softness in your shoulders in your face. Maybe give your toe a little point, a little wiggle back and forth, waking up the ankle, flex the foot, go back to the calf, we have spent some time in our calves. And then give your knee a hug, leave it center, and use left hand to take leg across the body. I'm going to drop my ankle to the floor, but it can hover if that's what's more accessible for you. I like to reach my right fingers, helps me relax my right shoulder to the mat, and I'm actually going to look to the right, but you could face the ceiling if your neck's not feeling it today. Take your knee across. Exhale, big hug and squeeze. And then send your leg on. Inhale, bring his left knee into chest. And we find release on the hug and exhale. We'll drop to the right armpit, or I should say left armpit. And we want to center our leg, extend our toes, interlace. Knees nice and soft. Opening in the back of the leg, first things first. Just easing into the pose. And then if you want to play with a little toe point or foot flex. your knee. Give it a hug and a squeeze. Exhale. Right hand takes leg across. See how I reach my left fingers. I'm taking that look to the left because it works for my neck. Ceiling if it doesn't work for yours. Mm. This final ringing out of the body. Clear out anything that you can leave behind on your mat. Remember, this is practice turning off the physical self. We're practicing relaxing. We're practicing completely clearing out the mind, going past your intention into an unfocused awareness. Sink deep. Release.
Inhale, deep breath. Inhale, your awareness back to mind and body. Inhaling movement to feet and hands. Dropping ears side to side. Big reach and full body stretch. Oftentimes we roll to the right. I'm rolling to my left. Sometimes I'll tell you right for grounding, left for energy. Today I'm coming to my left. And pausing. I'm going to press up to easy seat. And I will say, as always, yogis, thank you for sharing your practice and a piece of your Sunday morning. And the last day.